Sips faculty and course participants. As I said, it's truly an honor for me to be here today, and I'm unfortunately my, on my first visit to NUST and to Sips. Um, I wish to recognize and appreciate the role and contributions of Sips as a premier training institution in the region and in the area of UNT speaking and its various dimensions. Let me tell you that when being posted abroad, I uh, am within the UN system, there was recognition of SIPS, and this is something that you should be proud of as participants and as well as the, the faculty of SIPS. Um, such trainings, we believe, are, are great platforms for learning, collaboration, and camaraderie. I'm very pleased to note that the participants of our friends from abroad, from the military, civilian, and police sites in this course. I wish to also congratulate the participants, all participants, for their successful, com successful completion of the course. I must also underscore the fact that I'm delighted to see so many women being a part of this course. Because it does not just mean that these are women who have learned from the course, but also are potential peacekeepers for Pakistan abroad, and hence a matter of great pride. As you know, there's an effort that has been made by the United Nations to balance uh, their peacekeepers amongst women and men. And therefore, uh, it's a great opportunity for our women to go out in most difficult places as well, and to show their method. Our men have done it. It is now, uh, and of course, this is not something new. We've had from the police, uh, Shadali Begum Sahaba, who did a great job and was recognized by the UN by giving her an award as well. So our women are no less than any of our men uh, peacekeepers, and we are delighted that they are here a part of this course. Um, go and to be ready to be part of any peacekeeping mission where they are required. Ladies and gentlemen, Pakistan is a strong advocate of cooperative multilateralism. The UN in general and its peacekeeping operations in particular demonstrate how our collective will and actions contribute to advancing and safeguarding global peace and security. <coughs> We are very proud of over five decades of our partnership with the United Nations and its peacekeeping operations. We have deputed our best diplomats, soldiers, policemen, women, civil servants and relief workers to various peacekeeping missions. We have helped shape the normative and policy underpinning of the United Nations. There was a Canadian colleague of mine who once said, that Canada being next to a major country was congenitally multilateral. Pakistan being next to two major main countries. And in an area where there is an unfortunate complex situation for a long time, almost 30 years, Pakistan is one of the most fervent supporters of multilateralism. And to use the quote from my colleague, Canadian colleague, we are also congenitally multilateralists. And that's where we have an opportunity to work very closely with all our friends who are here, whether from Sri Lanka, or from Jordan, or from Libya, or from any country who is represented here or been <coughs> It's a great honor for us. And I tell you, it's always my great honor to talk about this that Pakistani diplomats in the United Nations are recognized as being top-notch to carry very high standards and be able to fly Pakistan's flag proudly. You should be proud of the fact that you're represented in the United Nations, everywhere in the United Nations, most effectively, most solidly, and the Pakistani flag flies with great pride. And I, it's something that I feel that is important for you to know because as you go in the field, some of you as you go in the field, you'll also be recognized for the work that you will do in the field. And I can tell you that I've had friends, uh, close friends from Liberia, from Sierra Leone, and many other parts of the world 
where we've had peacekeepers, Pakistani peacekeepers there, and where they have talked about how our peacekeepers not only acted as peacekeepers, but also helped build the country. In Liberia, we've, I had a very close friend, the Liberian ambassador in Italy, who used to tell me that no one can forget what the Pakistani peacekeepers did in Liberia, how they built hospitals, how they reached out to people, how they built bridges, how they reached out in the most difficult situations to provide uh, the kind of assistance that people in conflict situations need. So you should be proud to be part of that system where Pakistan produces the best and sends the best. Your challenges are many, there are many demands on your work in the field and of course you have to be extremely careful and follow the guidelines of the United Nations, otherwise it can get difficult. Uh, we, we, we all take great pride in being one of the top troop contributing countries, a reliable partner and a strong stakeholder since the formative years of human peacekeeping, something that was reflected in the presentation that was done here. Pakistan was amongst the earliest peacekeepers in 1916 in Congo, and Pakistan continues to be part of human uh, <coughs> peacekeepers and operations. It is not because there is money there, because at the end of the day sometimes there is no money there as well. It is because we are committed to the principles of peace and development, committed to these principles which we project through sending our peacekeepers. SIPS, we believe, represents another concrete example of our commitment and contribution to the shared values in, enshrined in the United Nations Charter and more specifically to UN peacekeeping. Training is a central constituent of peacekeeping architecture and machinery. It is an essential part of preparations and sensitization of potential peacekeepers. You go in different cultural contexts, you go in different parts of the world, and hence you need to be extremely sensitized to the local requirements and what each society expects of foreigners, quote unquote, who come to help them in their difficult situation. I therefore commend the Center for International Peace and Stability, especially the Department of Peacekeeping Training, for organizing several courses uh, over its short history. It should be a matter of pride for the Center for its professional excellence to impart diverse training courses in line with UN standards and guidelines. Ladies and gentlemen, it's heartening to see that SIPS is keeping pace with new challenges and future priorities. Pakistan was one of the first countries to endorse the UN Secretary General's Action for Peace, A4P, initiative. It is our hope that this initiative remains mindful of realistic expectations, making peace missions more robust and safer while mobilizing greater support for political settlement of the crises. As someone, as a country that believes in peace and development, we are also reaching out within our region to Afghanistan, to India, to all but despite the very difficult situations that we are confronted with for peace to be established because it is the demand of the people of Pakistan that peace is retained. And my friends from Sri Lanka know very well of what difference it makes when you move from conflict to peace. And what are the, what is the potential of peace? In Sri Lanka, you're doing extremely well now after uh, the difficulties of the conflict. And uh, we're proud to have been a part of your, of, of your peace effort. Um, all those countries who are here as well, we play some, in some measure and try to see where peace can return to these countries as well. I'm pleased to note that SIP's training courses duly reflect UN Secretary General's priorities for achieving gender equality. I'm also pleased to say that we were delighted 
to include in the uh, President of the UN General Assembly's program a visit to SIPS. Because it is not only what she came here to discuss, not only other issues, political and other issues, but she came here also to see um, Pakistan, a manifestation of Pakistan's commitment to peace, um, peacekeeping. <coughs> I'm certain this course has helped the participants in a broader understanding of the UN system, the peacekeeping architecture, the changing environment, new trends and challenges. Even more importantly, I hope the course has equipped you with the right set of skills to do your job professionally and effectively. To our, very, our friends from abroad, I hope you've had the time to learn more broadly about Pakistan, our people, arts, cuisine, and culture. I'm sure you can carry with you good memories and friendships. Friendships that will last a long time. As someone who's been in the diplomatic service for almost 35 years, I have friends in every part of the world. And I can call a friend in any part of the world. And they'll always be a response. Because these are friendships that we develop over the years working with the international community and maximizing these, re these relationships for the, for the benefit of our individual countries and for helping them as well. I wish you all the best in your future professional pursuits and a big thank you again to the faculty and SIPS for organizing this event. I wish you all success and I wish Pakistan the role in peacekeeping will be as historic and as important as it's always been. And that Pakistan will always be recalled as a country that has contributed in a significant, insignificant measure to, be, to United Nations peacekeeping, peacekeeping operations and its peacekeeping mandate. I thank you very much.